The Revelation of Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. In the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 20 and 21. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Matthew chapter 20 began with the phrase, For the kingdom of heaven is like. This is a fundamental phrase that we find in Jesus' discourse. A key to understanding the gospel that Jesus preached is to understand that his message was about the kingdom of God. It isn't far-fetched to imagine that Salome was among the crowd who was listening to this beautiful parable of inclusion and sovereignty. Before we can understand how this moved Salome's heart, we should look at chapter 19 and see what warranted the use of the term for at the beginning of the chapter. Verse 23 of the previous chapter reads, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus had just offered a rich young man an opportunity to enter his kingdom. But the young ruler was saddened by the requirements set before him. When he was told to shift his heart to the heavenly treasures by parting with some of his earthly wealth, we are told that he went away sad because he had great wealth. Having had this encounter with the rich young ruler, Jesus turns to a parable to teach about the inclusive nature of his kingdom. This is great news for you and me. We have access and acceptance into the majestic realm of our Lord and Savior. We are included in the promise of heaven. Salome would have heard this and would have set her heart on this matter of inclusion. She would have listened keenly and heard her Messiah speak about the late inclusion of laborers into the kingdom of God. How excited she must have been to be included in the citizenship of heaven. We may want to criticize her request, but it is apparent that although she was on earth, her heart was set toward heaven. Her heart desired the immediate realization of heaven's kingdom. Do you long for heaven? We can become so caught up with the wellness of life on earth that our desire for heaven becomes dull. Paul shared this longing, and we must endeavor to do the same. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1-4, through 4, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. There are no riches in this world to be compared with the treasures that Jesus has in store for us in his heavenly kingdom. Our hearts must be set toward those treasures. Picture yourself going camping and living inside a tent. You will quickly come to the understanding that no matter how high the quality of the tent, they are by design very fragile. Any storm, be it rain or wind that starts pounding, or when the snow starts to fall, you will quickly realize your tent is not a replacement for a permanent house. At the present, while we are all here on earth, our body is such a weak tent. It doesn't have permanent stability. Every single one of us, our bodies are aging every second, and they don't work as good as they used to when you were younger. The wonderful promise for believers is in Philippians 3, verse 21. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. There will be no sickness, pain, or medication. 
we must look forward to the awesome miracle of transforming from our mortal and corruptible bodies into bodies with immortality and incorruptibility. This should keep us on the edge of this world awaiting our transition. We must hold all that is dear to us in this world with a loose grip while we clench our fists around the joys of the heavenly promise. The words of this hymn from antiquity must resound in the hearts of the Lord's redeemed. I'm longing for heaven, my heart's set on going, where the cold hand of passing can reach me no more. I almost see Jesus waiting to greet me. I'm longing for heaven more than ever before. The witness of Salome and Paul must evoke similar throngs in our hearts. If our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we will not slight the thought of heaven as our home. They are sweet serenades of acceptance for those of us who have fought the fight and kept the faith. We are told in Matthew 25, the kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. The ones who do as is expected of them receive the praises of the master as he sings over them, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Oh, how we must long for such melodies to be sung over us with heavenly hope. Listen and hear Jesus say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. What wonderful words from Jesus. What a wonderful invitation from Jesus. As any grandparent knows too well, life is indeed short, and not everyone will see their grandchildren grow up or their children get married, or even a full life. Making memories is such an important thing because we know that nothing lasts forever. But in heaven, things will be much different. In heaven, we would not need to have to try to preserve memories in our mind because time will cease to exist and only eternity with other believers. In heaven, we won't have to pray for the time to move slower and the good days to last longer. In heaven, our hello will never again become a goodbye. Today, we are thankful for any opportunity to spend with our loved ones, but even when our time runs out here on earth, we still have the hope of heaven, where the wonderful moments with God will never come to an end. As believers, we need to look forward to heaven. It will be a place like no other. No matter how difficult your life is on this earth, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the assurance that you have a happy ending. We will get to see the Lord. We will finally be able to hug Him and bow before Him. Just imagine the feeling you will have when you finally see Jesus. Seeing Him who died for you. Seeing Him, the one who knows everything about you Seeing Him, who knows your shortcomings, failures, faults, mistakes, and sins, and still loves you. Just imagine the sensation you will have when you see a hole in His hand. The hole they nailed Him to the cross on. Then, seeing Him seated at the right hand of the Father. Just imagine being comforted by Jesus' encouraging words to have all your tears wiped away and to touch the hand of Jesus to wipe out all of our anxieties. And that is exactly what will happen when we go to heaven. It will be a giant celebration of all things divine. Worship music composed and performed by an innumerable number of angels. 
Just think of the atmosphere in heaven. You look up and you will be able to see angels as far as the eye can see. Let us keep our hearts attuned to the passion of Salome to inherit the heavenly kingdom. See past her request 